The Greenskins were once one of the worst factions in the game, until their rework came and made them one of the best. They can be impossible to stop once they get in a roll with their rapid confederations and the almighty war, allowing them to cover the map in record speed if you use them right. They're not perfect and still have some downsides, but overall are a very strong faction. First, for the pros and cons of the campaign gameplay. First of all the pros, the tribe leader mechanic allows them to expand incredibly quickly, especially early on. The war also gives your faction a near unstoppable level of power for a decently long time, so keeping these going as often as possible can make them hard to beat. And finally scrap allows them to constantly upgrade units beyond any other faction to make top tier units even better and bring lower tiers up a level to compete way past when they should. As for the cons, they of course have basically no friends, as other greenskins have a 50-50 chance of just wanting more, so everyone will be coming for you if you aren't careful. They also cannot trade even if they could get an agreement, as they can't use most resources that appear on the map. In general, their income isn't the best, especially early on, so they'll have to rely on sacking, looting and raiding to make any money. Let's now go over the different factions, their effects, starting locations and more. First of all, we have Grimgore's Art Boys. They are led by Grimgore Ironhide. For their faction effects, they can recruit Black Orc Big Bosses heroes in all provinces. Wars in this faction have an increased chance to contain Black Orcs, all armies gain 10% to campaign move range, and minus 15% to upkeep for Black Orcs and Biggins. For Grimgore's army, he gains plus 30% income from post-battle loot, 10 armor and 12 leadership for Black Orcs, and it of course has the Grimgore's War army ability. His faction starts in Sabre Mountain, and his starting units have some Black Orcs, 3 Orc Boys, 2 Goblin Archers, some Orc Ball Boy Biggins, and a Doom Diver Catapult, as well as a Black Orc Big Boss Hero. For their climate preferences, Frozen, Wasteland, Mountain and Savannah are suitable, Temperate, Desert and Jungle are unpleasant, and Magical Forest, Ocean, Chaotic Wasteland and Temperate Island are uninhabitable. For the short victory, you need to control at least 5 of this massive list of settlements, either directly or through vassals and alliances, as well as occupy, loot, raise or sack 30 different settlements. When playing Grimgore, it all really depends on who you want to fight. Since you have so many settlements to choose from, you can go in pretty much any direction you want. I would follow your starting wall to the northeast, and then straighten off to the challenge stone to grab your first settlement. Then go wherever you want, head further east into Cafe for Nan Gao and Han Yu Port, head south to the Great Halls of Greasers to take on Ogres and eventually Helm and Gorse because let's be honest he'll be there, and then west into the Wasteland and Central Mountains that contain pretty much every other settlement you'll need and are full of Greenskins, High Elves, Dwarves and more. Just go fight wherever you want, but for the easiest option, I'd head for the Wasteland and Central Mountains to find other Greenskins Confederate by beating their tribe's leader. Next up we have the Bone Rattlers, and they're led by Azhag the Slaughterer. Their faction gains faulty relations with Vampire Counts and Arkham the Black, their Wars have an increased chance to contain Wyverns, they gain 20% to the research rate, and 25% income from sacking settlements. For their army effects, they of course have access to the Azhag's War army ability. Their faction starts in Kazid Urkalaz, and their starting army has three Orc Biggins, two Orc Boys, some Forest Goblin Spider Rider Archers, some Trolls, and some Goblin Rock Lovers, as well as an Orc Shaman Hero. For their climate preferences, they are the same as Grimgore, but swap temperate and frozen. For their victory conditions, they must control all five of these provinces, as well as occupy loot, raise or sack 30 different settlements. Following the starting wall will get you the first of the required provinces. After this, I'd head south to get control of Peak Pass and finish your work in the mountains. Then head into the plains of the Old World, straight into Ostermark. From here, you can get the other two pretty easily, but I'd try and take out Kislev as soon as possible since it will only get stronger the longer you leave it alone. Once everything is under control, you can expand wherever you want, either in the plains or mountains, to get all those settlements. Next up we have the Crooked Moon, and they're led by Skarsnik. Skarsnik can only recruit Orc units from Karak 8 Peaks, has minus 40% upkeep and recruitment cost for Goblin units, plus 100% to Karak's XP gain, their Wars have an increased chance to contain Doom Divers, they also have a unique building chain available at Karak 8 Peaks, and minus 50% to the hero action cost. For Skarsnik's army, he enables Lightning Strike baseline, and grants 14 charge bonus for Night Goblin Squig Hopper units, and of course has access to the Skarsnik's War army ability. Their faction starts in Mount Gunbad, and for their starting armies they have 4 Night Goblins, some regular Goblins, some Goblin Archers, some Night Goblin Squig Hoppers, and an Arachnorock Spider, as well as a Goblin Big Boss Hero. Their climate preferences are the exact same as Grimgore, and for their victory conditions they must destroy the Crooked Moon Mutant Skits, Clan Angrund and Clan Moors, as well as control Carrick 8 Peaks either directly or through Vassals and Alliances, and the 30 different settlements. If you want to follow the starting war, trying to take out the faction leader if possible to get the quick confederation, then move south as quickly as possible whilst making the best army you can to expand and take over Karak 8 Peaks as soon as possible. Once it's under control you can keep expanding in the central mountains to track down Queek and take him out once you can. After this all you have left is Clan Angrund across the map, so navigate using the central bank of mountains and take him out whilst expanding to finish off your targets and get a bunch of other settlements. Next we have the Bloody Hands and these are led by Wurzag the Great Green Prophet. 
For his faction effects, their Wars have an increased chance to contain Savage Orcs, they have a minus 50% to the enemy hero success chance, and plus 25% charge bonus for Savage Orc units. His army effects, he has minus 50% upkeep and recruitment cost, and 20% physical resistance for Savage Orc units, and of course has access to the Wurzag's War army ability. The faction starts in Ekrund, and for their starting army, they have two Savage Orc Biggins, three Savage Orcs, two Savage Orc Arrow Boys, and some Savage Orc Boar Boys, as well as a Knight Goblin Shaman Hero. For their climate preferences, they're the same as Grimgore, but desert and jungle move to suitable, and frozen moves to uninhabitable. For their victory conditions, you must win any of Wurzag's quest battles, and control the three Badlands provinces, as well as occupy loot, raise or sack 30 different settlements. Follow the starting wall to take control of your starting province, and get off to a good start. After this, head south since the southern Badlands are right next door. If you can get the leader of the top knots, you can take it over pretty instantly and get a nice chunk of land. Finally, head back northeast to the eastern badlands to take on Red Fangs and get them under control. There are honestly so many greenskin tribes in the area, so if you keep tracking down leaders and taking them out, you'll get a ton of land under your control in no time. Then just play one of Wurzag's quest battles whenever you want, and you'll have the victory. And our final faction is the Broken Axe. This is led by Grom the Paunch. This faction has access to Grom's Cauldron. You can use this to cook many different recipes to grant powerful rewards for the faction. Ingredients for these recipes are found all over the map from doing a pretty much all actions, so you'll always be unlocking new effects. The faction also has minus 80 relations with High Elves, and minus 1 global recruitment duration for all Goblin units. For Grom's army, he grants 10 leadership when fighting versus Elves, 10% physical resistance for Goblin units, and minus 50% upkeep for Chariot and Pump Wagon units, as well as the Grom's War army ability. Their faction starts in Massive Orcal, and for their starting units they have 2 Goblins, 2 Orc Arrow Boys, some Stone Trolls, River Trolls, Spiky Roller Snotling Pump Wagons, and a Goblin Rock Lobbers unit, as well as a Giant River Troll Hag Hero. For their climate preferences, Wasteland, Mountain, Temperate Island and Savannah are suitable, Frozen, Temperate, Desert and Jungle are unpleasant, and Magical Forest, Ocean and Chaotic Wasteland are uninhabitable. For their victory conditions, nice and simple. You just have to control the Tower of Rest settlement, as well as the 30 other settlements. Grom has one of the worst starting locations in the game, if you ask me, since all nearby lands are unpleasant, and early on, you really can't be dealing with that. Take on the starting war, but don't bother expanding into Bretonian lands, just sack and raise to build up some cash. Then, make the biggest army you can and head east towards the Broken Nose, track down the leader to take all their lands instantly. Take out Clan Angrons, cover your rear, and then make your way into the Badlands and take out as many leaders as you can and grab a ton of land in no time. Once you have a beefy army or two, take them across to Ulthwan to take Tor of Rest and wipe out Eltharion. If you take over all the Badlands and a bit of the mountains, you should have a ton of lands, so have those conditions met pretty easily. Now we come to the faction mechanics. First of all, we have the Wars. Doing warmongering options like fighting battles and raising settlements will earn you reputation in the campaign. There are four levels of reputation you can have, and the higher level you are, the more bonuses you will get to a bunch of stuff faction wide. Once you reach enough reputation, you can choose to call a war on any visible faction. This will then grant you a ton of rewards for the duration of the war and help you take out that faction, as well as any others you run into during this time. All of your armies will get extra, no cost units in the same quantities and quality of the mother army. You can also dedicate wars to go or mark for even more bonuses to ranged or melee damage. And once your target's capital city is either raised or occupied within the time limit, your faction will receive a trophy that changes depending on the target. These trophies will grant faction wide bonuses that will last until you replace them with another successful. War. As well as this, you get some bonus reputation towards your next war. Next up we have Scrap. Scrap is picked up from battles and raising settlements, and it can be spent on upgrading units in your armies. Some Scrap upgrades require research to be completed, but once it is, a ton of units in the faction can be upgraded to change their stats one way or another. These can be more damage, armor, ammo, and more, so experiment with all the units you can find to upgrade what works best for you. Next up we have the Underway. The Greenskins also have access to the Underway's movement stance, which allows them to navigate terrain in a radius regardless of limitations like mountains. This can be incredibly useful for outmaneuvering enemies, just beware that you don't get caught out in this stance, since losing the battle while intercepted means losing the entire army. And finally we have tribe leaders. If you take out a greenskin faction leader in battle, you'll have a few options to dominate the faction. You can choose to confederate them, taking all their lords and lands instantly whilst avoiding the normal penalties, or you can release the faction leader to improve your relations with the faction, but there's not much point doing this while you're at war, so I digress. Now we come to the lord skills. First up we have Grimgar Ironhide. We're going to start from the blue line, going looter and raider for extra cash and looting and raiding, then lightning strike and mob boss for less upkeep. Finally, Renowned and Feared for all those great bonuses. Once you can get into the best of the best line for all the unique bonuses it brings, you should. And then his Topro has weapon strength, underways buffs, leadership, resistance, and an XP share, so all great choices. Inspiring presence for endgame unit buffs, then Dead Hard to make Grimgore even more effective in battle, focusing on attack since his damage is incredibly impressive, especially for a Footlord. 
Next up we have Asag the Slaughterer, and as with any spellcaster, head into his spells first. The lore isn't amazing, but there are a couple of great pickups, so get your preferred spells, then move on. Once you can, go into Imbued by Madness for his unique line, with a bunch of bonuses for units, himself, and the faction on the whole. Head into the blue tree, going into the same choices as you did with Grimgor. Then the Sopro has an ability, underway buffs, leadership, resistance, and an XP share, so all great choices there. Inspiring presence for endgame unit buffs, and then Blade Master for combat buffs, focusing on charge, bonus, and speed. Fun to get his mount online. Next up we have Skarsnik, starting the blue tree, going the same route as usual. Lightning Strike is a little earlier, so grab that proper tough for extra movement range. Get into Spite of the Bad Moon as soon as possible since it's his unique line and buffs his sneaky playstyle. The top row has buffs to ambushers, weapon strength, imbued attacks, unit buffs, underways, leadership resistance and an XP share so are all great, inspiring presence for endgame units, and finally Blade Master for any points at the end, focusing on damage and speed to make the most of his sneaky playstyle. Next up we have Wurzag, go into those spells first since the big wise one of the best laws in the game, so grab everything, the real savage boys for a bunch of buffs to savage orc units, then his top row has underways buffs, leadership and an XP share, then the blue tree, going the same as usual. Finally, inspiring presence for endgame units, maybe focusing on Savage Orcs to make the most of his gimmick. Next we have Grom the Paunch, starts from the blue line, going all the usual choices. At level 12, going to his great immensity line for buffs to his army, himself and the faction on the whole. His top row has underways buffs, leadership, resistance, goblin buffs and an XP share, so are all great. Inspiring presence for your late game units, maybe focusing on pump wagons to make the most of his gimmick. Then finishing Blade Master, focusing on charge bonus and speed. The Goblin Great Shaman, you want to go into the spells first, grabbing anything you find useful. The top row has buffs to several unit types, underways, leadership and ability, resistance and an XP share, so are all great. Then head into the blue line, going the same choice as always, and finally end in inspiring presence for those endgame unit buffs. The Night Goblin War Boss, you want to start in the blue line, going the same choice as always. The top row has buffs to ambushes, weapon strength, weapon imbuements, unit buffs, underways, leadership resistance and an XP share, inspiring presence for endgame unit buffs, and then end in the Blade Master line, focusing on speed and charge to make the most of their endgame mount. And finally, the Orc War Boss, start in the blue tree, just like usual, going all the same choice as before. The top row has buffs to underways, leadership resistance and an XP share, then inspiring presence for endgame unit buffs, and finish in Blade Master, focusing on attack and damage to make the most of their endgame mount. Now we come to the heroes. First up we have the Black Orc Big Boss. On the campaign map they can assault garrisons, wound, assault units, spread control and provide training when embedded in an army. These are great combat heroes so you want to build them just for that. Training first for free XP for all their army's units, then dead hard for all their combat buffs and you'll end up grabbing basically everything here so it doesn't really matter where you start. Once you can, grab back on your feet, one of the three choices and arm to their teeth. And the top row has an ability, resistance and an XP share so all great. And finally, spread control for any spare points. The Goblin Big Boss, on the campaign map they can damage walls, assassinate, block armies, cleanse corruption and scavenge when embedded in an army. These can be campaign or battle assassins. For campaign you go assassinate and specialist, then the rest of the blue line but scavenge, get stalker off the top row, and you're done. For battle, go scavenge for extra cash, then into bloody blade, getting basically everything. The top row has vanguard deployments, weapon strength, vision range, resistance and an XP share, so all great picks. Next up the giant river troll hag, on the campaign map these can steal technology, wound, assault units, spread control and replenish troops when embedded in an army. These are spellcasters, you want them in your armies anytime you recruit them. Go straight into their spells, grabbing any you want, then replenish troops to keep their army as healthy as possible. The top row has resistance, HP, leadership, weapon strength and an XP share, so all great picks. And finally the horrid mass line buffs them in combat and focuses on defense to keep them live and casting as much as possible. And finally we come to the night goblin shamans slash the orc shamans because they are basically the exact same heroes with just a couple of minor differences. On the campaign map they can both steal technology, wound, hinder replenishment, spread control and provide scouting when embedded in an army. Both these guys want to be in your armies since their spells are wasted if not. Go right to their spells and grab everything you find useful, or everything all since you don't really have many other choices here. The top row has resistance and XP share so grab all those, and then an ability for the goblin. And then scouting and spread control for any points at the end. Now we come to the commandments. Camp Ruckus increases control, growth and reduces corruption. This is of course great for maintaining control of your provinces and making sure they're growing as quickly as possible. Brag about the boss reduces recruit cost and increases recruitment capacity which is of course great for recruiting and give it a reduces construction cost and increases building income. This one's of course great for when you are building up your settlements or if you just want some extra cash for them and you don't need them to grow. And finally we come to the research tree. They have a fairly standard tree with three initial branches focusing on campaign, units and general army buffs. You also have a lot of projects that cost scrap that unlock upgrades for units so picking these up as you unlock better units is a great way to keep up the powerful upgrades. And that is just about everything you need to know to play the green skins in campaign. We've got the battle guide coming next to run you through the entire roster as well as compositions and more so subscribe if you want to see that. Hope to hit 50k by the end of the year so I sure would appreciate the assist. You can join the discord to vote on who the next guide should be for or you can just join it to annoy me with posts. If you enjoyed this video and or found it useful then consider dropping it a like. If you really enjoy the content and want to support it directly then consider becoming a member on YouTube or a patron on the Patreon. Doing so gets you early insights into future content, increased voting power, discounts on merch as well as shout outs at the end of videos like Henry took of his spots at the officer's tier. Thank you to all supporters. One last thank you for watching and for now. I've been Colonel Dumbers, and I will see you next turn.